Well, hello C++ programmers and fellow game developers. Brian Malloy here, and the image you see in, in this picture is one that I borrowed from the Wikipedia, and it describes the configuration or the way that you would formulate classes, arrange classes for the observer pattern. Many of you have probably already know the observer pattern, so this is a review and kind of just a, a, a point of view, my point of view of how it works. So um, I didn't change this, this picture in case you look at the Wikipedia and see it, so I thought I'd stick with it, but I have an example that I have changed. So um, if I were going to change it, I would keep the notify, but I'd make this attach and detach. So let me just talk about it. So we have a subject, and this subject is, is going to be observed by some group of um, several maybe kinds of groups like here's a concrete observer A, concrete observer B. Observer, concrete observer A might be some skeletons, concrete observer B might be some droggers, I don't know, something like that, NPCs or whatever. And the subject keeps a list or a vector or an array of all the observers that are observing the subject. And it's a strange relationship, I know. And it works like this, the observers observe the subject. How? Well, the subject notifies the observer whenever anything relevant to the observer happens. So, for example, let's suppose there's a skeleton patrolling a certain area in a dungeon. Then the subject, when the subject enters that area in the, du in the dungeon, then the subject tells the skeleton, hey, I'm here, try to kill me. And the skeleton says, oh, great, I'm glad you're here. I want to try to kill you. And it works like that. Under the covers, of course, the player doesn't know this is happening, but that's the way it works. Okay, so how does it all start? The observer says, uh, the, when, the obser when you instantiate the observer, typically you pass a reference to, of the subject to the observer, and the observer says, okay, add me to your collection. And the subject adds the, this observer to the collection. Then when the subject does something significant, then the subject notifies all of the relevant observers and tells them, hey, I'm going to do something. Okay, so this line right here is aggregation. That is the subject has a, a whole bunch, has a list, a group of observers. And it's a, it's a, it's a one-way ticket, by the way. The subject talks to the observers. The observers never talk to the subject, okay, except in that initial instantiation where the observer passes a reference to it of, its, of itself to the subject. But other than that initial communication, it's a one-way street. The subject says, hey, I've done this do what you want. The subject says, hey, I did that. And a key attribute of the observer pattern is that the observer never modifies the subject. Now, why is that significant? It's significant because if there's a bug in the subject, if the, if the developer notices there's a fault somewhere in the subject, the developer can rest assured that it's not the observers because the observers never modify the subject. So that's, that's just a security thing, and it's just the, the rule and the discipline that is observed in the observer pattern. That is followed, I guess I should say. Sorry about the pun. That is the rule that is followed in the observer pattern, that the observer never modifies the subject, and the subject only notifies the observer. So it's a one-way street. Okay, let's look at the example. So here's an example. I've modified this because of the terminology. I wanted this to more closely conform to um, both the, the image that I just showed you and, and the way I've, I always remember it from the Gang of Four. Okay, so here we have an abstract base class for observers. This specifies the interface that all observers should have. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so this is the, the uh, uh, abstract base class, and notice the notify. And the notify is, is required. All observers have to be able to be notified. Otherwise, how do they know what the subject is doing? Okay, so that's, that's why that there. Here's the subject. And what's important about the subject? The subject usually has, of course, it's going to have a constructor, um, and it has an array of observers that we want to initialize. So here's our vector of observers. All right, and notice that uh, the subject attaches the observer to the observer's list or vector, to the observer's vector. And here is a set val that, and, and this set val actually is, is um, let's see, do we ever use set val? 
set, uh, sorry, set, I'm uh, sorry, set, slash, set, val, we do use it, okay, so when the, when the, when the subject changes its value, that set, val, whenever the subject changes this value, <clears throat> that is the significant event. I know it doesn't sound significant, but that's the significant event that will trigger the subject notifying the observers. Okay, so whenever the subject changes its value here, that says, okay, I've changed my value. I got to go tell all the observers that I've changed my value. Now, the observers may not set that value, may not change that value. So that value has to get changed somewhere else. And in this case, it's kind of artificial. It could be happening just because the subject walks into a certain area or whatever, or is given a, a task to perform or a quest, whatever. Anyway, when, the, when that value changes, that's the trigger for the subject to notify all the observers. How does it notify the observers? It runs through this list of vectors, sorry. It runs through this vector of observers. Uh, and you know what, if I were gonna code this, I would have done this um, because I don't like to see for loops all in one line. It's the same, semantics are the same. I would just prefer it to be like that. Okay, there you have it. That's the subject. And that's how the subject works. Let's look at, we have two concrete observers, a div observer and a mod observer. The, and that's kind of imitating maybe a, a drawer and a skeleton or whatever. The div observer is gonna um, perform division on that value when it gets notified and the mod observer is gonna uh, perform um, modulus on that value and it really just publishes it just prints that value out notice that the neither observer neither observer modifies the subject not only does it not not modify the subject but it doesn't even once once the the constructor terminates the observer no longer even knows about the subject okay now Initially, the subject is passed in so that the observer can say, hey, attach me to your, your vector. But once that happens, this is gone and, and the, the observers don't even know about the subject. The subject knows about them. So the subject is passed into the constructor just so that this observer can say, hey, attach me. But other than that, nothing happens. Okay, so let's come down here. We instantiate a subject. Then we instantiate three observers, two div observers and a mod observer. We'll follow this, this div observer. And we pass this, really we're passing the address of the subject. I mean, there are other ways we could do this. I don't know why. I guess I should have changed that too. But, and then we, we have this value that we, that we pass in. And then here's the, here's the set val. This set val is this kind of external event or this event that happens to the subject that which triggers the subject notifying uh, all of the observers. So this is probably going to be, let's see, this is division, so it's called the divisor. This is going to be the divisor, and this is going to be the, the one of the modulus operators, the one on the right, I don't know. Anyway, so this is going to trigger um, for the subject to notify the observers. Let's see, we set val 14, so let's come up into subject. We, the subject changes its value from zero to 14. Okay, that's the significant event. So the subject says, oh boy, I gotta go notify my observers. So it calls this function notify observers. So notify observers then runs through this vector of observers and says, hey, I wanna tell you my value changed and this is what it is. And so it passes it in there. So here's the div observer. The div observer says, oh, I just got notified that the, val the new value is uh, 14 or whatever. So it's gonna print out um, 14 div, uh, that divisor it initially passed in, which I think for the first one was a four. Uh, 14 div four is what? Four threes, that is a three. So it's gonna print a three and so forth. So let's, let's kind of move it aside. There's the execution. So 14 div four is three, I already ran it, you know. Let's make sure it still runs. We've made some changes. We run it and we still get the same thing. Okay, so that's so what in this case these observers are just reporting the the modulus or the divide the, the quotient. Um, 
in other case, in a real game, something different would happen. So this this little example is trying to simulate the communication that occurs between a group of observers and a subject. I don't know. I hope it helps. It's a excuse me. It's a it's a decent example of the observer pattern. Um, I think more interesting will be the next video I do where I show you how the observer pattern can be used uh, to, to, to form a, a, a one-way communication between uh, the player and um, some observers. And those observers might be um, NPCs that want to kill the player or give something to the player, some gold. I don't know. Hope this helps. Happy programming. Brian Malloy, over and out.